Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before we get into it with our guests, well, first of all, you know, everyone should recognize our guests. We have Kathy on for, I think, the third time that she's been on. I mean, I kind of lose track after a while, but yeah, she's on here to sort of give us an update on what she's been up to over this last year. And yeah, just, just talk more about her journey. And again, Kathy, thank you so much for coming back on. Thank you for having me. Well, I mean, yeah, it's been a little bit over a year now, and Geez, I mean, with how long this year has gone, this last year has gone, 2020, I should say. I mean, 2021 seemed a little bit quicker, but it still felt way too long. What has this last year been like for you? Because I'm pretty sure, didn't you have like a, a surgery this last off season and you've been, you know, sort of dealing with that? How has is, how is this whole year gone for you? Yeah, um, I had a total knee replacement. It'll be a year ago, December 23rd. And um, so it was pretty gruesome. Uh it was it was quite the journey. Uh, six weeks after the surgery, I had to go back and have a manipulation done. So they had to put me back under, break the scar tissue because I was locked at 45 degrees. So um, had that done, then rehab every day for two weeks straight and then continued from there. But that was my breaking point. Um, I started working with um, a coach over in the UK, Gareth Sapstead. He's amazing. He helped me get through that recovery. Plus, um, I ended up competing 10 months after the surgery um, in October. So, yeah, I didn't know that I was going to, but it worked out. But you had an interesting off season because, I mean, dealing with all that, too. I mean, this is just so much more of a mental sport than it is a physical sport, like we've talked about numerous times on this podcast. What has this whole last year been like for you, though, too? Because most people, when they do get injured, I mean... I think it's, there might've been one other guest, but I'm not sure that said that like, oh, after they got hurt, you know, they competed, you know, still in that year. But for you, I mean, what was that whole journey like mentally just dealing with the fact that, hey, you know, I am going to have to, you know, take things easy for a while because knowing the bodybuilder mindset, working out does sort of become your life. So, I mean, it does, you know, when you, when you have to take it off, it it kind of feels like you don't really have a purpose for the, for that time. That's what I've been, that's what a lot of people have described it to for me, at least. Yes. And, um. The week after the surgery, I could see how people get really depressed and um, get into a really bad funk because I wasn't able to do things by myself. I had to have people drive me to my appointments. Um, I had to actually take a uh, band and lift my leg up to get it onto the bed. And it was swollen like three times bigger than normal. And so I'm like, oh, this just sucks. But then, you know, I think about other people and I'm like, you know what, you've got this. But then when I had the um, scar tissue so aggressive, it really was setting me back. And I would watch these old ladies in the rehab and they're riding the bike and I can't even get a full rotation. And I'm like, how far out are you? Oh, I I would be talking so much trash to you if knowing that like you look so much better than them. And like I'm an old lady being like. Oh, it looks like all those muscles are really working for you or something like that. Oh my God. I would, I would. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was the thing. It was just like, oh, uh, I was like, how far out are you? And they're like, oh, four weeks. And I'm like, oh, great. I don't like you anymore. So, so once the manipulation was done six weeks after my surgery, I'm at rehab and he gets me on the bike. He says, okay, just go back and rock back and forth. Like you have been. And I'm messing with it. And all of a sudden I get this full rotation and I looked over at my rehab guy and I'm like, are you kidding me? Did you just see that? And he's like, yeah. So that was my breaking point. And then I was like, I'm not letting anything stop me. And so there it was. Was it hard to sort of not overdo things when you finally get back into sort of a steady state of training? Because if it was me personally, I think that would be one thing that I would at least struggle with knowing that probably I'd miss it so much. And then getting back into the shape of things, just like realizing that like, Hey, I can't really overdo it. Yeah, it was really hard. And Gareth was really good about that. He was like, um, I said, I don't feel like I'm doing as much as I used to do. And he's like, okay, do you want another surgery? And I'm like, no. So I had to listen, which is hard, but it worked out. And in seven months um, of working with him, I was able to take the stage um, October 23rd. So, How long really until you were able to start like training somewhat heavy, at least in your legs? Um, It was, I, my surgery was in December, not until like August. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's. I mean, hey, as a guy that doesn't like legs myself, you know that I'd be in heaven though. I'd just be like, okay, yeah, now I now I actually have an excuse where I don't have to train them. So you know that that's good. But we, I asked you this last time too. Now, what is one body part that you think you've improved on the most over this last year? Well, it definitely is my legs because now my knee is so much stronger. Um, I came in fuller, but conditioned, not as full as hopefully this next year because now I'm. I'm not having to worry about my knee. Um, it's it's almost 100% now. So um, that is probably, and my core. My core is like, has gotten so much better. So, Did you change up your training at all other than your injury when it came to like maybe training the rest of your body, not just your legs? Did you change things up at all? Yes. Um, going with a new coach, uh, he changed up everything. And so... Uh, He is very much into, you know, avoiding injuries. What about your nutrition? Did you have to change things up? I mean, especially when you were, you know, injured, did you have to change things up a little bit? And when you got back into the, you know, thick of things, did you change it up at all? Yeah. Like when I came out of surgery, my surgeon's like, okay, eat lots of food. And I just looked at him like, why? And he's like, it's going to help your recovery. But, you know, after being under anesthesia, I was like, I don't feel like eating. And so it was a week before I really felt like I wanted to eat. But then after that, you know, I, I did. And then I felt like the puff marshmallow man. Um, and <laughs> I'm just like, ah, but my, my nutrition has totally changed again with, with the new coach. So i um, doing more macro tracking and it's awesome. I was eating popcorn and, um, you know, just breads and things like that. Like, you know, healthy breads, Ezekiel bread and things a week before peak week. So yeah, everything, I mean, everything was crazy. And my peak week was amazing. I didn't ever cut carbs ever. Yeah. And what was that like just stepping on that stage after, you know, coming out of 10 months out of surgery? I mean, that's not, like I said before, that's an accomplishment that most of my guests probably have never been able to say they they've done. Um, It was a fantastic feeling because I, that's what I love. I love posing. I love doing my thing. And, you know, people come up to me and they're like, oh my gosh, you can tell how much you love this. You have so much fun. Whereas a lot of people just are going through the motions. And I'm like, I do. I said, I don't even care if I placed or not because I won. Because 10 months after having surgery, that was it. That was my win right there. Please tell me that your cardio was maybe a little bit less than before with your knee surgery. I only did 40 minutes. Yeah. I was going to say, cause I trainer, I'd be like, okay, that's torture. Then if he's like making you like go just as much, like after you've had knee surgery. So, I mean, at, at least there's that. And was your sleep affected at all with the, with the surgery and everything? Because I know, I mean, sometimes after surgery, people, their sleep schedule sometimes gets a little out of whack. It was a little bit, um, but just more so because I would get uncomfortable and I'd have to try and move and, and I couldn't bend my knee. And so, you know, just trying to be comfortable. That was the main thing. But now I sleep better than I did before surgery because I'm not hurting all the time. Yeah. Well, and one thing that I love to ask all my guests that, especially after this last year is that, I mean, like one thing that I've found so interesting about this last year is that, you know, with all the deaths that have been happening and just all this stuff, it's really brought to light some of the extremes that this sport sort of entails and the the extremes that people go to, whether it comes to, you know, the diuretics and, and other things. And obviously, you know, I was aware of the fact before just because from talking to people, but I mean, what has your reaction been like during this? And I think it's just the general public seems to be a lot more aware of like sort of, you know, what really goes on in the sport, you know, the dedication, the drive that this takes, but what has your been, your reaction been like to this year? Because I mean, it's, it just seems like this has been so much, more crazy stuff has been happening this year than in years past. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, I, myself, um, it's really sad to me because most of these people are young and they are doing things to their bodies to help enhance it way to the extreme. And it's, it's for what? I mean, it's, I don't know. I just, I'm very, very limited on knowing all of that, the protocols and things like that. Um, at my age, I just don't want to go to that extreme. But I'm, I'm, I'm really sad about it. And I wish, for one thing, you know, they're going to be keep rewarding them 
And so people are, of course, they're going to do whatever they can to get to that point. Well, if they're going to continue to reward that, that look, then yeah, it's, it's going to continue happening. And it's, it's sad to me because there's so much more in life than just a trophy or, you know, a couple thousand dollars if you win or whatever, you know, it's not worth your life. Oh yeah. And plus the money that you're winning. I mean, that's still most of the time, not even going to cover the cost of, you know, <laughs> so yeah, again, like, if you're in this for the money, you are a very stupid person. I will just say that with all with all love, though. But like, and I also have a Ponzi scheme to also sell you on then too. If you're in this for the money, but you know, hey, that. But yeah, and yeah, that, I agree with you 100. percent Where yeah, so many people just take it so hard, and I, and I, I do. I'm not going to say it's been good that you know all this has been happening, but I, I think there's going to be some good that might come out of it in the the awareness that's being spread, and maybe you know they will start to sort of realize you know like hey, we maybe took things a little too far when it comes to the judging, when it comes to you know, everything that it goes along with it. Cause yeah, it is sort of an enabling thing when, you know, you're rewarding the people that take things to the most extreme. Cause then, you know, what do you think they're going to be less extreme then if they keep winning when they're doing the most? So yeah, it's just, it's sort of a cycle that, re, you know, repeats itself. But, uh, so how'd you do in your show? What, what did you end up placing or what, what happened? I did. There was 18 in my division, um, in the 50 plus and I'm 60. So, um, I was, I was very conditioned. Um, that's what's always gotten me because I won that show last year and, um, and then I was, I was fuller and more conditioned this year. So, you know, it's just, it's, I don't know. I try and tell people you do it for the love of doing it, not for the judge or the placing. You need to love what you're doing or else you're going to be miserable. And so that's why I do it. It keeps me focused and, and you know, I, I just love it. I just enjoy it. That's, I mean, she mentions her age and every time I hate having guests like her on, cause it always just makes me feel, I mean, I'm 27 and she's 60 and she looks better. And I'm just like, what the hell's going on with it? So that's why, you know, Hey, I, it, I, whenever I have too much of an ego, I'm always like, okay, I'll invite some of the older guests on now again, just to make sure that, you know, I get, I, I get pegged down a notch then and sort of realize my place. But yeah, it's just, it's just so amazing. And I mean, we talked about this before, but I mean, like being a 60 year old woman and looking the way that you look, do you find it sometimes funny or fascinating? Like the reactions that you do get, because it's like not that many times that you see 60 year olds that have like arms like you do, or just like, or just look like you and just in general. Yeah, it's, it's, it's flattering, but it's also kind of funny. Sometimes people are like, Oh, you know, I can't get like that because I'm 50. I'm like, well, I'm 60. And they're like, no way. And I'm like, yeah, I am. And I said, you know, um, you take care of yourself and you push yourself and you can look anywhere you want to look. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people like myself aren't just convinced like that where it's like, okay, yeah, there's some there's some voodoo going on there. I, I don't know what's going on. No, but yeah, it's, it is it is true as much as I try not to believe it. And, you know, it just yeah, it just comes down to all the, the stuff that it entails. But I mean, again, you know, just with this whole year that you've had and everything what are your goals that you have for the next year? Because I mean, obviously, you know, fingers crossed, you won't have to have surgery again, you know, fingers and knock on wood. But uh, so where are you looking for at, for, you know, sort of, you know, improvements to make, or where do you want to be at a year from now? Okay. So this is my plan because I don't want to um, go on a, you know, the gear and everything. Um, I'm going to go back into figure. That's where I started. So I'm going doing a full circle. Um, and I think figure masters, there's more shows that are available. Uh, there's more, uh, divisions where it's broken up. So there's a 60 and up. So I'll be in with people my age instead of 10 years younger. I do think that that's strange though. They're like, yeah, they have you like, if it's like 50 plus, it's like, yeah, 10 years is a pretty big difference when it comes to, you know, what you can look like really basically. Yeah. 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 And so, um, I talked with my posing coach, um, you know, Kenny Wallach. And then I talked to my coach, Gareth, and um, I talked to one, the promoter of the Legion and they all think it's a fantastic idea. They said, you have a great physique for a figure and um, I think you'll fit really well there. So I will miss physique though, because I love doing the routine and, and the posing, but you know, who's to say? You got to wear those damn high heels again, though. That's the only other problem. I is, know, like, right? <laughs> get ready for that. But I don't even think we mentioned this before, but like now that you are moving back to figure, I mean, the one figure pose that 
you know, for so many people is the hardest thing for them is that lat spread. And I mean, we've had guests on where, you know, it takes them years to develop it, but it's sort of like riding a bike where once you develop it, it's almost impossible to unlearn it. Was that ever a struggle for you sort of developing that pose? Or was it one of those things that you sort of just picked up a little bit easier? No, at the very beginning, when I first started in figure, it was really hard. I had broken some ribs on my right side, so I could not get it open. And I was like, what the heck? This is hard. And so I always, when I work with people, I say, this is the hardest pose that you're going to have. So, yeah. That is, yeah. And most people just don't, again, understand that. But it just, you know, it comes with the with the trials and tri- tribulations. But, I mean... Obviously, you know, making that change, you know, from physique to figure, do you plan on changing your training at all for that? Because, I mean, even though, like you said, like you do have a physique that's more, you know, suited for figure, obviously you probably might not be going through the same nutrition and, you know, training as, are you planning to, you know, mix things up or sort of downgrade that on a little bit just to get more of that figure look? Yeah, well, what we're um, planning on doing is actually bringing out my shoulder caps more and then... um you know, I don't have to really worry about my back because that's one of my stronger suits. And then, um, of course, working on the legs, bringing them down a little bit. So and bringing out that quad suite more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, every everything with this competitions, you know, all these divisions all have different goals that people try to go to. And, you know, it always seems like some people do have that idea of like downgrading to a category or upgrading to a category. Like, oh, it's going to be so much easier, but it's like, no, it's just a whole different set of trials and tribulations, really, that, you know, and it might actually be even harder than than it was before. But, yeah, and, I mean, has that been easier for you? I mean, I know, you know, you also do a little help with, like, personal training and stuff. Has it been easier now that the pandemic has gotten more manageable now, where it's like it seems like everything's somewhat back to normal? Has it gotten easier for you to sort of get back to that lifestyle as well when it comes to training people? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, We're actually doing a big workshop uh, for competition prep and lifestyle transformation here where I live um, on the 18th of December. And um, just to bring more, you know, more knowledge to people. I have a couple of other pros, Anthony D. Herrera and his girlfriend, Lauren, and then a couple of nationally qualified um, ranked seventh and um, fifth and fitness and in bikini so they're going to come and we're going to just do a big workshop and just help people out and so the gym that i uh go to they they haven't really they did have to shut down for a little bit but not to the extreme as uh, some of the other cities yeah and i mean you did mention that you wanted to you know get those shoulders, you know, pop a little bit more shoulders is the number one body part for women that we hear of that str- they struggle with, you know, probably more than any other body part. What does a shoulder day really look like for you? Because I mean, I would get killed in comments and down below people being like, Oh, she's 60 years old and she has shoulders like that. And you're not even going to ask her what she at least does for him. And she's trying to get me even bigger. <laughs> okay. uh, I do a lot of uh, like, you know, just regular dumbbell presses, um, I do a lot of Y presses, um, cables, a lot of cables. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, just the typical, nothing too crazy. Plate load, you know, plate raises on the incline. Um, I do a lot of sled work uh, with doing things with the shoulders. So it's just kind of crazy. I mean, yeah, it's not... I. I love asking that question though too as well because a lot of people just assume that it's sort of like rocket science to get them in for for some people it's just like it's not that hard really we're just just your diet and the training and just being consistent I mean I can't preach it enough yeah and, well, and just realizing too that there's also more than one part to the shoulder where I have so many times I tell people they come up to me and they say oh I'm training shoulders and I go oh what part and then they'll just go oh the shoulder part and it's like well you know your front your mid your your middle or your rear you know you know. So uh, it's it's nice to sort of understand that type of basic stuff though too as well when it when it comes to that at least because yeah I I do get you know I get a little giggle out of it myself personally when I you know deal with people doing with that but uh yeah and people won't don't work their rear delts near enough and I do rear delts with back as well so I get that part in you know a couple of times a week so what is the hardest part with sort of dealing with you know being a bodybuilder in your day-to-day life because 
for me personally, I, one of the stories that I've heard that I could probably relate or think that most of my guests, you know, have the most problem with is that, you know, the more farther you get into the sport, the more minimal your gains actually get, you know, year after year where it's like, that's the cruelest joke ever in this sport is that, you know, you get started in your first year and you'll see 10 times usually more of the results than you will in your 10th year going into your 11th year. How do you deal with that sort of mentally just realizing that, you know, like, hey, I can be working even harder than I did the last year. But it's just science that I probably won't see as much as the as the changes I saw the year before. Yeah. Well, and, you know, as we get older, it's it's harder to gain muscle and you just have to adapt to that. And I work out less than I did when I was younger. Um, you know, I I work out six days a week, but I'm just more efficient and and more strength. So um, you just have to adapt continuously and you know the only way you are going to make a ton of gains is if you are using gear and you know that's the only way you're gonna make anything i am still searching desperately for that white buffalo genetic freak that can just do it you know but you know i haven't found him yet still looking still looking but you know maybe one of these days maybe one of these days i'll find them but you know so far you know nothing but other than you know like training maybe less what as you've gotten older in this sport, what would you say is probably one of the biggest, you know, at one of the biggest adjustments that you've had to make? Um, slowing down because I, I've always been an athlete. Um, I always, you know, I played basketball, um, softball, volleyball, track. And so I've always been very competitive. I grew up with three older brothers. And so that made it for, you know, a total tomboy, um, but it's just having to slow down a little bit is kind of hard for me. So, what is it like having three other brothers now, and you're probably the you're the bodybuilder out of all of them now? Yeah, none of them can keep up with me, <laughs> and they don't pick on me as much as they used to. Well, hey, you know, again, that's another that's another you know positive there. But you did mention, I mean, you're a huge dog lover, as am I. That you also got a grand dog now. I well, call the grand dog. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Ranger. Yep. So what is? And I know you've gotten some other new interesting dog news. So what is this last year you've been like for you on the dog front? Because didn't you get also a new dog yourself too? Yes, um, she's actually down at my son's because she was on a roll, and so I wouldn't have gotten anything done. So he's she's down playing with Blizzard, who is their new puppy, which is a great Pyrenees. Um, yes. And then Ranger, he's a new golden retriever. But the reason that the two my two sons got puppies is because um I had given them puppies when they were little babies and they had to put them down within a month of each other. So now they have little puppies. And then there's Boomer, who's um, Gemma's best friend, which is Zach's other dog. And so they they play it all the time. So. See, I mean, I personally had to delay this podcast for about five minutes because as soon as I got home, my dog wouldn't leave my side and it wanted just a belly rub. So I was like, okay, you know, I had to I had to do it. So, you know, yeah, she's probably waiting outside my door right now waiting for that. But um, yeah, she's she's a complete psychopath. We don't, you know, I mean, she'll she's a small, she's one of those small dogs that think that she's the toughest thing on the planet. But you know, yeah, she's uh, yeah, she's interesting. Like she, I had to get up at four forty five this morning, and she, I love my I love my parents. They uh, they unlocked my door and then just had that thing. That thing was licking me on the face. That's how it woke me up basically this, that this morning. So. Yep, I could, I could, I could go into dog stories, but now as we're getting to the colder part of the year, you know, it things get real interesting because I do not want to take my dog out for a walk, and, you know, when it's like twenty degrees outside, like it is right now. But you, yeah, you, you I gotta do it. Jump every morning at eighteen degrees, so you can do it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. How much of how much of your dog walking do you account for in your cardio? Like, do you ever like not do your cardio for the day because you consider that your cardio? Or is it like some of the guests that I've had on where they just add that to their step, step count, basically? Um, That's all I'm doing for cardio right now. So, yeah. But when it was close, that's I would include that in part of what my cardio time was. So. And I mean, for being po as post show as you are, and you still look like really like lean and you know, very conditioned. Has this been probably the longest that you've been able to somewhat maintain a lean and conditioned look after a show? 
Well, um, I usually only try and get maybe 15 pounds max above my stage weight. Because there again, as we get older, our elasticity gets shot. And so I don't want to have a bunch of loose skin and, you know, have to try and lose that 30 pounds or whatever. So, yeah. I can't relate, but, you know, I, I am not looking forward to it. But I will just, you know, I will enjoy what I have while I can. Then again, my beard is probably about an extra pound, you know, that I'm adding on right now. So, you know, hey, I might, you know, I might, if I want to ever do like one of those weight loss shows, you know, I don't get why people just grow a huge long beard. It might be a pound or two, you know, extra that you might that you might have in there. But, no, it's it's getting ridiculous. I'm going to have to shave this, you know, within the next couple weeks because it's gotten to the point now where if I eat anything, you're going to accidentally bite down on a hair or something like that. And it's, you know, it's, it's not a, not a fun time, but you know, Hey, I just gave up on my, I gave up on my, um, uh, my appearance, my facial appearance. I was going to say, what's it called by everyone. I'm going off of a 12 hour shift right here. So my brain, like I, I have a almost prep brain basically right now where, I, where it sort of feels like now. So again, I apologize for everyone out there. If I seem like a, a little, out of there, but you know, Hey, you got to do what you got to do, especially, you know, during the hol- holiday season, but do you have any special plans for uh, Christmas coming up? Do you have any fun family traditions that you do? Um, well, I usually spend it with my granddaughters. So that's what I'll do. I'll um, spend the night with them. And then that way I can see them open their Santa presents. And Do they make any fun comments or observations about having a Jack grandma? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah they love going to the gym with me. And then, um, they'll, they'll probably get into the whole, like, oh, my grandma can beat up your dad or something like that. They'll probably, that's all how it always ends up. But no, that's, 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 that's awesome. And I mean, it's just so great to have that, you know, be that inspiration, especially for, cause yeah, it's, it's definitely not that many grandmas around that, you know, really serve that's that, you know, fitness inspiration, especially to the, to the, to the younger generation. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, it's gotta be odd for at, at least, I mean, like, like I was talking about, like in your shoes, I mean, like walking around and, you know, dealing with some people, but is it something that you can like get used to, or is it something that still sometimes like shocks you to this day? Um, people say I'm kind of oblivious to it because I'll walk by and they're like, did you see that? Part? I'm like, no. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I just kind of mind my own business and do my thing. And, and if they want to come talk to me, then I can talk to them. But that's that's i mean if i ever became famous that would be i would just want to be the most ignorantly blissful person ever where it's like i don't even notice anybody and that's that's the way to do it because then really yeah it's but yeah i mean and that's that's a great mood to have especially you know or a great thing to have i mean especially you know around now but i mean just the whole mentality of this sport and just realizing that you know things can happen at a whim and just like you said like with your surgery and and stuff does it really and and being the fact that you were sort of in a disabled spot for a couple of weeks does that sort of give you even more, you know, does it also inspire you to, you know, continue with your journey? Because, like, I've talked to people that work in, like, hospitals where they deal with people that have just, you know, been dealt a rough hand in life. And then that gives them more motivation in the gym, just realizing that, like, hey, you know, I have it very lucky. When you were in that injured state, did it sort of help make you realize just, you know, how lucky and blessed you are to be in shape and, you know, live this lifestyle so that when you did eventually get back to the healthier version, you were just able to appreciate things a little bit more? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, there was, you know, the couple of weeks and I was like, this is just not right because they told me that my muscle density was hindering my progress and my recovery. And I'm like, that is backwards. That should not be. <laughs> You're too in shape, lady. I'm sorry. What can I say? <laughs> they're like, yeah, they're like, our best um, success stories come from 80 year old women and men because they have no muscle density. They're just noodles, you know? And so I said, well, that's backwards. But after that, you know, but yeah, it does inspire me because, um, when people see what I've done in this short period of time, they are like, you are such an inspiration. Well, that's one of the best compliments that I can get is that I'm inspiring others and helping motivate them because, um, you know, that just, it makes you feel good that you can help somebody that way. Yeah, no, 100%. And I mean, I ask you this question every single time, but I'm going to ask you again. I mean, if you could change one thing about the sport of bodybuilding and everyone would go along with it, will be one thing that you'd like to see changed. Um, probably the politics in it. Um, you know, 
there's just, if you're on a certain team, you know, you're going to get more points just because of that reason. And that shouldn't be it. It should be totally based on your physique, on the criteria that they've created. Um, but other than that, you know, I, I would like to see something done with um, all the protocols that these people are taking, um, not to be rewarded so much for how much gear you're on. Um, or just make a federation where like it's like super like it's like it's super encouraged and stuff like that. We're like, yeah, go all out, but then like don't force everyone to do it. Then like if you wanna just get, you know, like basically gills basically then just by taking so much stuff, then like yeah, go for it. But like don't make it so that everyone else has to just to keep up with you then. Yeah. Well, and you know, in the nat the natural organizations, they're not natural. I mean, I I've called one organization out on it because I had a pro card with the, with them. And um, when I asked for a copy of my drug test, because the judge asked me if I had ever gotten a copy, they couldn't provide it. And then they finally admitted to me that they target tests. So that's when I got out of their organization and went back into MPC. Well, then, yeah, because I mean, like into the IFBB. It took them how long to figure out that the Russians were all doping and stuff like that, and they were all coming out clean. So yeah, there's no, I mean, it's there are some clean athletes out there that compete in the natural competitions, but it's like, there's always going to be one or two that sneak in that, you know, through some way, you know, they'll be able to, you know, sneak their way in. But yeah, I totally, un, you know, understand what you're saying on, on, on that front too. But I mean, coming with your age too, when it comes to your training, do you tend to train more heavier now or you sort of just go for the reps? Would you like to sort of, are you sort of like the balance in between the two? Yeah, I balance. Um, so like one phase, I'll go heavy, less reps. This next phase that comes in, I have more reps and less and lots of like supersets. So I mix it up. And what is one body part you are looking forward to growing even more this next year? My legs. Again, just even more. You're just never going to, yeah, just never. Yeah. Well, you are, yeah, like you said, for figure, I mean, you're not going to be really, you know, you kind of already set upper body wise for most of the figure part, you know, except, except you said shoulders. I'm not going to say shoulders because I don't think so. But hey, you know, you're the, you're the competitor. I'm the podcast host. So, you know, I don't really, I don't really have a say in it, but yeah, that's, you know, hey, more power to you. Cause you know, with me and legs, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a history that's, you know, not really, not really a fond one, but, um, yeah. And just, you know, on top of everything that, that happens in this in, in this bodybuilding journey, though, too, what have been some things outside of bodybuilding that, you know, have happened to you this last year that are, you know, that you enjoyed or that, you know, have been newsworthy for you, at least? Um, well, I started a new job at a, um, Accelerated Medical, and it's a regenerative medicine um, clinic. So I do the rehab for patients that are getting stem cells or you know, that have injuries that are getting PRP, um, along with their chiropractic. So that's been kind of a new journey for me. It's, it's more in my line of, um, what I enjoy doing. So that's been probably the biggest and then getting Gemma. Yeah, yep, absolutely. You know, yeah, getting that. I mean, the only thing about getting that dog though, is that like the one thing that I, that I don't like about this, the dog sort of life cycle in general is that when they're puppies, they sleep the most. When you're like, when they're puppies, I want them to be active and up and at them 24 seven, you know, all the time. So I can play with them instead of sleeping 23 hours of the day, basically. Well, let me send Gemma to you because she does not. She is very gladly. Active. Gladly. Okay. I've always said, you know, if there's ever a cure for depression for anyone, just go into a pen of puppies. And if that doesn't cure you, then you're lost as a human being, you know? So She's yeah, never been much of a sleeper. She does sleep really well at night, but during the day she is on the go constantly. Does she like tear stuff up or anything? Or is she like one of those neat dogs that doesn't really touch anything? No. Anytime the thing is, our, gets... the thing is, our dog has never done that though. So that's weird. Cause like both of the dogs that I've had, my childhood dog and this dog never tore up anything. Wow. Yeah. No, she, yeah. yeah. He's eating, eating my uh, laptop cord and charger. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I'll, I'll scratch that. So the one thing that tore up, if you leave a napkin around, they'll tear it up. But that's, you know, that's, that's as hard as they'll go. As hard as my dog will go at least. But wow. then again, I mean, we did, well, she also doesn't have that many teeth. So we took it to, we took her to, she's only like four years old now. We took her to the vet just for a random checkup. Next thing you know, they had to pull eight teeth. Yeah. Because she had like some like, she had some like 
something in her teeth that like would have caused bad illness like like a, like later on had they let it develop so yeah it's kind of funny now whenever she like puts her tongue out her tongue just hangs out of her mouth literally by like a, a half of a centimeter basically sometimes because like she her, she's missing one of the front teeth that would like hold it in but yeah she's she's an absolute yeah she she's she's a funny little dog and she said you know funny little things happen to her but again you know kathy it's just been great to have you on again to talk to you again and just obviously like always you know you just almost pissed me off because then now i feel like a god i gotta go work out you know now after after you know talk to her here let's time time to embarrass me can you give us a front double bye now you're 60 years old jesus Whenever you're ready, can you give us a front double? Let's just. Let's, oh yes, yeah. yes, yes. Good God. Move up. Yeah, well, you know, I that's why I saved it for the end there because you know I wouldn't have been able to continue this conversation had I saw had I seen it you know, you know a little ahead of time because it's just you know, more power to you. But hey, you know everyone, if that doesn't give you motivation, you know, go out and train and you know stop eating those Twinkies and get off the couch. You know, I have no idea what will and. You know, I asked this to you other times before, but maybe the answer's changed. If there's one piece of advice that you could give for anyone out there looking, you know, sort of get started in a healthy and fit lifestyle, what would be the best piece of advice that you could give them? I would tell them to um, get a trainer that actually knows what they're doing, not somebody that's just read a book and taken a test. Look at that person, do some research on that person. Um, I, I feel like, you know, if you can't do it, how are you expecting your client to do it? Um, so that would be my best advice. Um, you know, just get comfortable with being in the gym. Um, don't be intimidated. The gym is a good place to be. And if anybody feels makes you feel that way, then that's not the place to be. No, oh, I, I I couldn't agree with you more. And I'm I'm making a poll now. Where I'm trying to figure out if for, well, first of all, do you take pre workout? Um, occasionally, um, I do the Gaspari uh, Super Pump Aggression um, when I'm really tired. Um, but other than that, I I usually just drink some coffee. Well, I'm gonna write that down because I am making a poll now of like what gets the most votes, and then after like a, after a while, I'm gonna end up just t- trying that one because you know it's gonna be reviewed. And I I had to have a coffee this morning. It was the first time I had a coffee in like five years, and my head almost exploded. But luckily, luckily it didn't. But I was just I was I'm not gonna lie, everyone. I was just so beat, and I'm still so beat right now. I got like four hours of sleep last night because I worked late last night and then I had to get up at like four o'clock again. And when I got home, you know, I didn't have anything to eat. So that's the only crappy thing about, you know, working late is that when you do get home, like you're going to have to, it's like two or three hours before you can at least go to bed. If you're going to have to get like, make a full meal and stuff and, and get all that. So there's all that that applies to it as well. Not just, you know, the, the sleeping, but yeah. And I mean, again, Kathy, as always an absolute delight to talk to you and just, you know, sort of pick your brain and thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, everyone. Well, like I said before, this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing off. Have a great day, everyone.